Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to go through how to measure large amounts of current into an Arduino using a shunt resistor. And before I start I need to let you know that measuring large amounts of current there is more than one way to do it. And here's the second popular way. It's called a Hall Effect Sensor. So a Hall Effect Sensor works in a completely different way. It basically measures magnetic flux because as current flows uh, a magnetic field is emitted from it and the Hall Effect measures that. But anyway, this video is not about that. This video is about shunt resistors and how to use one um, to measure current into the Arduino. Okay, so we've got the shunt resistor. Now how does this work? Well, you wire it into your, your load in series. So we'll have a load here. Um, then next, we'll wire this up. And what will happen is that your load will cause a voltage drop uh, across it. So you start with a voltage, you'll have a huge voltage drop, and you'll have a tiny voltage drop across this. And then here, this will be to ground, or the minus uh, terminal. And basically, if this here, this point is ground, then this point here would represent the small voltage drop which is caused by this resistor here. So if we say we've got a 10 volt thing, and 9 volts has dropped across here, and 1 volt has dropped across here, then we could potentially read 1 volt from here, 0 volts from here, and we'd know that the voltage dropped across this resistor is 1 volt. So why does that matter? Well, if we have a 1 volt drop, and we know the resistance, which we do, then we can find out the current. So 1 volt divided by 1 ohm is 1 amp. So if that was, if we did have a voltage drop of 1 volt and this was 1 ohm, we know that 1 amp would be flowing through it. Anyway, to an extent, that information is not always needed. And the reason being is because on here, they often mark the shunt resistors. And in this one you can see it says 20 amps, 75 millivolts. It doesn't actually tell you the resistance of the resistor. And that's a little bit peculiar, but that's just how they do it. So anyway, what it tells you here is that if you were to put a load of 20 amps across it, you would get a 75 millivolt drop. So you could work that out by plugging these in here. 75 millivolts divided by 20. Well, actually, you'd have to, you'd have to say 0 0.075 divided by 20 equals, and it would give you the resistance of this resistor. But anyway, that's good enough. So 20 amp load would result in a 75 millivolt drop across here. So far so good. Okay, so that's useful, but we still don't know how to use it yet. So, this is what we're going to do. Wire this up to our load, as, as I've already mentioned. Now here, these two terminals, one of them will be ground, and the other one will be an amount of voltage which we're going to read into an Arduino or a chip. So, there is a slight issue, and the issue is, if we were to put a 20 amp load on it, we'd get a voltage drop of 75 millivolts, so 75 millivolts, and um, that's a big problem for the Arduino, and the reason being is because the Arduino ADC um, gives one count per 4.8 millivolts, so one count or equals 4.8 millivolts and that's because it's a 10 bit ADC um, so basically if you multiply that by a thousand you get around about 5 volts so when you go to um, Arduino Studio and you start reading the ADC you'll read it in count uh, 0 to 1023 and um, this basically um, describes the amount of voltage which it's reading into that pin. So anyway, what's the problem? The problem is that 20 amps would uh, let you read 75 millivolts. But as you can see here, 75 divided by 5, roughly, is only 15. So you'd only have 15 uh, values to resolve to, and that's not really very good. So 20 amps divided by 15 is something like 1 point something, 1.2 or something like that. 
So you'd only get a new count every amp, which really isn't good enough. It's not very accurate at all. So what do we do? Well, the thing we need to do is amplify it. So if we were to if we were to get this 75 millivolts, if I just write this again here, 75 millivolts, and let's say we were to inc incur a gain of 10, we'd then get 750 millivolts, right? So we've got a bit more resolution. Now if we were to multiply it by 100, we get 7,500 millivolts, which is too much. That's that's 7.5 volts, which is too much for the Arduino. So we have to apply a gain to this voltage here from this. We need a gain big enough for us to be able to resolve to accurately, but we need it to be not too big that it will destroy our Arduino. And I do, ideally, we need something that's lower than 5 volts. You can use an op amp to do this. You can use an instrumentation amplifier to do it. You can use rail-to-rail -rail op amps, rail-to-rail -rail instrumentation amplifiers, and all this sort of stuff. But um, they are not amazing. And um, in fact, they're not very good. This is what I recommend. There we go, you can see. So this chip is an AD8215 chip and it's made by analog devices and this is an excellent chip it's actually a current sense amplifier IC and it's designed specially to do this job so um, what I've done is I've got this chip and I've soldered it onto this little um, breakout board converter thing okay okay so going back to the problem that we were going to be experiencing which is a 75 millivolts is too too low um, the chip which I've just shown you amplifies it by 20 or there's a gain of 20 which that is of course um, 750 is multiplied by 10 so 1500 0, 0 is 20 so 75 multiplied by 20 is 1500 millivolts which is of course 1.5 volts and that's still quite low actually, but it's definitely enough for us to resolve to. So, uh, what's next? Okay, so I've printed out the specification data sheet and I'll just talk you through some important values. So you can see here, gain, the typical value is 20, so we're going to have a gain of 20. The accuracy is very good. Um, what else is important here? Uh, import common mode, common mode input voltage range minus two volts to sixty-five volts, and that's really good. What that means is that we could basically use this device as a low side or high side amplifier. I'm going to be using it low, and because it goes down to minus two, if I've got a small discrepancy of a few voltage uh, millivolt difference. Um, between two different circuits, then I can get away with it. There's a bit of a bit of leeway there, so that will be good. Um, let's see what else is important here. Power supply operating range, 5 volts. So it's powered by 5 volts, and uh, that's also ideal. And the temperature range, minus 40 to 125 Celsius, so we're all fine there. Okay, so how do we connect this? So pin 1 is minus in, which basically means uh, ground. Because I'm doing low side sensing, minus in is ground. Um, it's basically the low side of the shunt. In, pin 8, is the high side of the shunt. So the, the higher of the two, the one with the higher voltage. Uh, basically before the load. So ground is system ground, which is the Arduino ground. Seven's not connected. Three's not connected. Six is five volts. Four is not connected, and five is out. So five is the amplified signal from here to the Arduino.